and we are back on Zoom as well. And we, I want to welcome all of you who are on Zoom, those of you on Facebook, I want to welcome you, hallelujah, to the Lord's threshing floor. And, and some of you could not join us in the month of of, of of September, because September was the month of one another, and we were mostly only on, on Zoom. And some of you who can only join us on Facebook missed out on, on, on September, but we missed you so much. And tonight I want to especially, especially welcome all of you who are back on Facebook. Welcome back. And tonight I want to welcome those of you who are on Zoom, those of you who are on Facebook, and especially if you're on Facebook, I want you to do one more thing for me. I want you to take someone and the name that is above your name and just say, welcome back to the Lord's threshing floor. Those of you who are on Zoom, you will also welcome each other and just say, welcome back to the Lord's threshing floor. Welcome back on the floor. Just tell someone, my sister, welcome back on the floor. Welcome to the floor. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. Just take a name and welcome someone. Just take a name and say, welcome to the floor. Welcome to the floor. Hallelujah. God is awesome. And may the Lord bless you as you do so. And I also want to welcome all the men and all the women of God who are online tonight. May the Lord bless you. I see Minister Helen Yogo is online all the way from Germany. We missed you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming back to the threshing floor. God bless you. I see uh, uh, Minister Chipita is online as well. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to the threshing floor. All the men and all the women of God who are online on Facebook, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. And I also want to welcome all the women, women on the threshing floor of all the branches. God bless you. Thank you for coming. All our special guests, all our VIP guests who are frequent guests visiting us on the floor, May the Lord bless you. We appreciate you. We love you. Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us on the floor tonight. Hallelujah. I also want to welcome uh, Keshes and Tumi are also online. I want to welcome them. Uh, they are serving behind the scenes. May the Lord bless them as well. And this is the Lord's threshing floor. And the agenda on the floor remains the same hallelujah the agenda on the threshing floor remains the same even on a day like this this is the place of separation every time we come together to thresh god is removing veils from us hallelujah and god is making sure that we emerge victorious god is making sure that we come out bigger and better hallelujah god is making sure that we come out better after every night of threshing and this is the place of judgment god is judging every enemy and i always say when we say enemy we don't see people we see delay we see sickness we see hindrances hallelujah so every time we come together to thresh god will judge every enemy and this is the place of worship we worship god in spirit and in truth so hallelujah i welcome you to the threshing floor and tonight is a special night somebody just type it out and say tonight is a special night tonight is no ordinary night tonight is a special night number one it is the first friday of the new month called great grace it is the first friday of the new month called great grace hallelujah and we are joined tonight by our minister who will minister tonight to us is none other than the apostle of order hallelujah the apostle of order the founder and the president of abundant life ministry and the, the, the senior pastor of royal assembly also the overseer of women on the threshing floor apostle is here tonight to minister and i don't want to take much time i want to surrender already i want to move away already and i want to welcome the men of god to come and minister to us tonight so would you help me tonight women on the threshing floor our vip guests would you help me tonight by pressing your heart buttons 
as we welcome the man of God, the apostle of God, to come and give us the grand opening of this month of great grace. Hallelujah. Apostle, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, please? Can you indicate if you can hear me? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We, we thank God for what the Lord is busy doing. We thank him for what he will still do. Hallelujah. And we thank him for what he's still doing in our life. Glory be to God. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the threshing floor. It's a great place to be. It's a wonderful place to be. Hallelujah. This is the threshing floor that God answers prayer quicker than expected. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless each and everyone who is connected in the name of Jesus. I also want to appreciate all the coordinators, all the coordinators of the threshing floor from all region. May the Lord bless you real good. Also, I want to thank and appreciate the grace that gather us together, the convener, the woman of God, the host of women on the threshing floor, prophetess, Golda Badmos. May the Lord bless you. Those who are online, can you help me celebrate the woman of God? Just press your heart button just to celebrate her. She's doing a great work. And we pray that the Lord will continue to use you for his glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's an exciting night, and I believe every one of us, we are expectant. We are expectant. Hallelujah. And my prayer tonight is that as we gather in the presence of the Lord, not in the presence of men, in the presence of God. He will manifest his goodness in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. I know one thing for sure that when God gathers his people, he does not gather them to waste their time. So every time we come in his presence, we must be expectant to go home with something. Hallelujah. So before I go, I want you to quickly commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. I want you to pray. Just pray this one simple prayer and say, oh Lord, open the channel of my spirit. Open the channel of my spirit. Let the channel of my spirit be opened up so that I can receive in full in the name of Jesus. Just take a moment and talk to your father in the in heaven. Channel of our spirit, open up. Channel of our spirit, open up. Let us receive in full. Take away, oh Lord, every hindrance. Take away every blockage in the name of Jesus. Let there be a smooth transaction tonight between our spirit and the spirit of God. Let there be a smooth transition from where we are to where the word of God wants to take us to tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we bless you. To you, O God, be all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen and amen, glory be to God. And one thing I believe is that the Bible says, whatever we ask in his name, he will give to us. So as you have prayed, God is at work. And I believe the channel of your spirit is already open and you will receive in full tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight... My assignment is very simple, is to help lay the foundation for the month. And the month, the theme for this month is great grace. 
online also can you help us somebody help us to type it out there so that those who are joining we know great grace so i will be talking about great grace hallelujah you see when the lord speaks it means he wants to do what he says he will do when the Lord speaks, it means it means business because the Lord does not say something. The Lord does not give instructions if he's not going to do it. He is a faithful God. He is a God who says something and he makes it come to pass. So when the Lord says great grace, it only means one thing for us on the women on the threshing floor. And what does that mean? It means great grace is coming upon you. It means great grace is coming upon your ministry. It means great grace is coming upon your family. It means great grace is coming upon everything that concerns you. And I stand upon that word and I decree here on the woman on the threshing floor for everyone that connect, for everyone that participate, great grace of the Lord will come and manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Buka Santa Lebregedendia. Ikayada Sotoli and Thank you, Father. Let us go to the word of the Lord tonight. I will be taking the scripture from the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Online usher, please help us put it there. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. I'll be reading from the King James Version. It reads, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. I will take that again. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. Father, bless this word that we have read. We have prayed the channel of our spirit has been opened. Do what only you can do in the life of everyone connected tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. As your word is coming straight from your throne, I take authority over every wandering spirit. I command them to align to that which the Lord is busy doing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. At the ministration of this word, let the power that accompany your word visit each and every one in their home in the name of Jesus and do what you are prepared to do even from the foundation of the earth in Jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah the apostles were chosen of God they were chosen by Jesus they were empowered and they were commissioned by Jesus to go and preach the good news. He chose some who were fishing. He took them, the tax collector, the doctor, irrespective of their education status, irrespective of their political affiliation, irrespective of the background. He chose them from diverse ways and he trained them, he empowered them, he spent time with them and he commissioned them and he told them to go and preach the gospel. Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18, Jesus spoke to them. He said, all power, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. And he said, go, therefore, and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the year. That was the commission. That was the great commission. That was why he chose them. So he chose them purposely to advance his kingdom. He chose them to say, my disciple, I have shown you who I am. You have seen what I can do. And all power has been given to me. And in this power, I'm sending you forth. 
Go and advance my kingdom. Go and tell them about my power. Go and bring people into this kingdom. He said, teach them all I have done, I have taught you. Meaning he said, by your lifestyle, demonstrate, model to them all I have taught you. For example, the love I have taught you, demonstrate to them through your lifestyle. You will teach them how to love. Forgive as I have taught you. Demonstrate it to them. Admonish them. Teach them. Guide them. That is what Jesus has commissioned them to do. Hallelujah. So the apostles, after Jesus left, they decided to obey and be doers of the word. And with the great ability and the power that Jesus invested in them in that authority, the Bible said they were continuously, and I want you to know that they continue, continuously testifying to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They did not sit down and talk about the exciting time they had about Jesus. <laughs> they did not spend time talking about the miracles that happened during the time of Jesus. Many of us, we attend great conference. We will learn so many things. We come to women on the threshing floor. We are empowered with so much. But when we go home, when we meet our friends, we spend the greater part of time talking about how eloquent the minister of gospel was. We talk about the deliverance that take place. We even text ourselves. We joke about it. Did you see that woman that fell that was manifesting under the power of God? That is what we talk about. It's not that we can't talk about how good the conference is or how good things is, but we people spend more time in talking about the event rather than be like they are supposed to, to go forth and do what they are supposed to do. Hmm. So the, the apostle did not spend time talking about the glorious thing. They didn't say, do you remember the, 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 the 5,000 people that we are fed with bread and fish? Did you remember the woman, the, the woman whose son died and Jesus raised? They didn't talk about those times, but they took what they learned and they stood upon the authority given to them. They went ahead to do what he called them to do. They put into practice what they have learned from Jesus. The Bible said they continued, they continued to testify about the restoration of Jesus Christ. This means that they did not do it once and stop. They did not do it twice and stop. They continually do what he asked them to do because they knew Jesus said, occupy till I come. So they continually do what he asked them to do. They did not get tired. They did not get frustrated. I believe there were places they got to, they didn't receive them. That did not discourage them. They continue to do what he asked them to do. They continue to talk about the restoration of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, as a result of their obedience, as a result of continually doing what Jesus has asked them to do, irrespective of the circumstances, irrespective of the environment. Something great happened to them in that scripture. Something mighty happened to them. You will ask me, what is that? What is it that happens to them as they continually do what Jesus asked them to do as they continually to testify about the death and restoration of Jesus Christ. What happened to them? The Bible said, great grace was upon them. As the disciple went on continually in the power that was bestowed upon them to testify about Jesus, great grace was upon them. Hallelujah. 
Can I pause here and submit to you women on the threshing floor that obedience to the word of God and commitment to the assignment he has called you to do will make you a candidate for great grace. You are a child of God. You have been connected to the threshing floor. A lot of teaching has come out. Great impartation has been released upon you. The question is, what have you done? What are you doing with what has been released into you and into your life? Obedience and faithfulness to that which is committed into your hands we qualify you for great grace. The Bible said the apostle, despite the circumstances, despite the ridicule, they continually, they did not look at the weather, they did not look at challenges, they continually do what he asked them to do. Everywhere they go, they were propagating the gospel, telling them about the death and restoration of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when they did that, because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, the Bible said, he rewarded them, and the Bible said, great grace was upon them. Glory be to God. Now, the question is, what is this great grace? What is this great grace that came upon the the, the, the Apostle, before we talk about this great grace, I want you to know that God is a God of principle. Anytime you read anything in the scripture and you see certain pattern being followed and result comes, it means it's a principle that God wants everyone to follow. If you follow this pattern, you follow this principle, God will honor it and you will get the same result that they did. For example, the Bible says, give and it shall be given. It's a principle. If you give, you will receive. So the apostles did what Jesus asked them to do, and their obedience provoked great grace to come upon them. It means if you do what God has called you to do as a mother, as a minister of the gospel, as a child of God, as a member of the choir, as a, uh, a member of the woman on the threshing floor, you will provoke great grace to come upon you. And I will share with you later why God wants to release great grace on those who obey him. Hallelujah. Now, what is this great grace? We have two words here, great and grace. Great and grace. When you talk of great, everybody knows what great is. It's something that is big. It's something that is huge. When something is big, when something is huge, it cannot be ignored. Everyone will see. That is when we talk about great. Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about the most important part of this compound word, grace. Grace. I believe a lot of teaching have gone out talking about grace. We've heard teaching concerning the meaning of grace in the Hebrew and the Greek. But I'm not going to bother you on that. I just want to go straight based on the context of what we are talking about tonight. Now, the Bible defines in simple terms grace, and this is how we define grace in different Bible dictionaries. It's the grace is defined as the unmerited favor. I believe you've had that before. It talks about the mercy, the compassion, the acceptance, the kindness, the graciousness, the goodness, and the divine assistance of God. Can I take that again? The Bible dictionary defines grace as the unmerited favor the mercy, the compassion, the acceptance, the kindness, graciousness, goodwill, and divine assistance of God. You see, the grace we are talking here is the opposite of what the world called karma, which is getting what you deserve. 
But grace is not like that. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. You don't work for it. Now let's break it down. What is this grace we're talking about? Hallelujah. Grace that we're talking about is the power and the ability of God operating through us so that we can effectively work in whatever he has called us to do. That which he has called us to do require certain strength. You see, when God calls you to do something, you can't do it in your own power. You can't accomplish it in your own power. Whatever God asks you to do is always greater than you yourself. If any time what you want to do is within your power, just know that it's not of God. It is of you and it's of men. But when what God wants you to do is beyond your power, it will supply the ability and the power to help you achieve it to the standard of heaven. That is grace. Hallelujah. Grace is the kindness that is shown to someone who does not deserve it. Most of us, from where we are coming from, we do not deserve the assignment that God has asked us to, to do. But grace of God qualifies us to do what God wants us to do. And it will help us to accomplish it. That is grace, the kindness that is given to us. The grace of God is what help you to accomplish, to achieve results without sweat. It is that divine element that makes life easy. Grace is the heavenly handkerchief that wipe away sweat of labor and give you favor and flavor your life to enter into your destiny with results. That's the grace we are talking about. The grace of God is that which puts you in a marketplace and silence everyone from asking you questions. Who are you? And make them to focus on the one that sends you. Can I take that again? The grace of God is the emblem that God placed upon you. That when you enter the marketplace or anywhere, it silences people from questioning who you are. And it makes them to see the Christ that is in you. Mm. And it's, it, 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 it disempowers whoever wants to stand in your way so that you can achieve what God wants you to do. Mm. And this same grace is the, the, same, is the divine power that is also needed to help us to be properly sanctified in the Lord. It helps us to overcome sin. It helps us to overcome addiction. And it helps us to overcome temptation. Hallelujah. If you hear all the definition of the grace are given to you in this instance, it is relating to that which God has called you to do. This grace is an enablement. It enables you to do. It enables you to function mm. according to what God has called you to do. Mm. Now, you will ask me, man of God, you talk about grace. What then is great grace? Hallelujah. Before I go into it, I, 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 let me explain this. I like the way the Amplified Version put great grace. It says great grace is God's remarkable, outstanding, extraordinary, loving kindness and favor and goodwill. Mm. So what we are saying is this. Now let me go back to what I mentioned earlier. I said great grace is provoked by obedience. There is grace and there is great grace, which means if there is a level of grace, there is another one that is in a higher dimension. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus talked to us about the, the, the parable of the talents. He gave one, ten, one, five, and one, another one, one. When the master came back, the one with ten multiplied, it got ten. The one with five multiplied, it got five. The one with one buried his own talent. And what happened? The summer, the judgment was that 
Take from he who does not have and give to the one that has. What does that mean for you and her? When God calls you to do an assignment, he said, take the gospel to the end of the earth. If you start from Ventuk and you are able to do it in obedience, irrespective of all the challenges, he will say you have done it with the grace for one time. Then he will give you a greater grace to move from Ventuk to Okahanja. From Okahanja to Wafi Spay, from Wafi Spay to, 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 to Ketmansua, from Ketmansua, it takes you, as you continue to do more, it increases the grace so that you move from one territory to another. So if you are not obedient in the little, you will not be able to provide a great grace. There is grace to do the little which you have given, but you need to, to you need to, to, to convince your master. You need, need to convince your father in the heaven that I am ready to do more. I'm ready to do more. Hallelujah. So what is great grace? Great grace is the grace that is responsible for doing big things. Mm. Somebody type out the big things. It's uh, for doing big things. Uh, hallelujah. Our God has created us to do great, great big things. He has created us to do great exploits. Uh, he, he will not give you more grace if you are not efficient and doing what he has asked you to do oh, at yeah. the level where you are. Oh, yeah. In other words, great grace is an outstanding, extraordinary, divine power and ability working through us to do greater exploits for the Lord without any limitation. Let me take that again. Great grace is the outstanding, extraordinary, divine power and ability that works through us to do great exploit for the Lord without any limitation. Elijah in First King chapter 17 verse 1 close the heavens and put the key in his pockets. That is great grace. Before he got there he has been doing some few things. But when he got there, he did what has never been done before. He declared, there shall not be rain for three years except at my words. He was able to do that through great grace. That's great grace in action. At this time, Elijah was able to outrun Elijah who was riding on the horse. That is great grace. David was able to defeat Goliath. <laughs> David defeated the lion with the grace he had in the wilderness. He defeated the, 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 the lion uh, and the other elephant with the grace he had there. But he came to confront the giant. And God saw, you are proving yourself with the grace I give to you in the little. Now you need a greater grace. Through great grace, he was able to pull down the giants. The Bible said the apostles were able to record outstanding results. Yeah. And as they continue, they continue. Great grace was upon them. Because as you continue, you are taking territories. As you continue, you are expanding. As you continue, you are reaching many places. And God knows the more you advance the kingdom of God, the more the enemy will want to confront you. So he gives you great grace to empower you so that you can achieve more. Because he does not want to hear that the one who killed Goliath today is now slain by the lion that he defeated yesterday. God will never allow anyone who is continually obeying him to be defeated by the enemy of yesterday in the today or tomorrow of his life because great grace is upon that person. Amen. This great grace will help you to reach goals beyond where you have been. He helped you to reach aspiration. It tells you to reach the finish line. 
that God has prepared for you through the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you and is at work in you. When great grace is sufficient, hey, life is sufficient and comfortable. This grace is, when it comes upon you, this great grace, it takes you to a, the places where you don't think you can be. Nothing impossible becomes possible yeah. because of great grace. Many people have been praying. They have been praying. Because things are possible. There is nothing impossible with God. Nothing God can, what God cannot do does not exist. But situation remains the same. Why is that? It's because great grace has not been apportioned to them. And why is that? It's because they have not been found faithful yeah. in the little which yeah. has been given to them. Jesus. The scripture in Acts 4, 33, and with great power, which Jesus has given to them, the apostles continually gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm. And great grace mm. was upon them all. All, all, not some of them, mm. all. It means all of them were involved in spreading the gospel. If all of us on the woman on the threshing floor could take this word and stand up and do what we are going, called to do, great grace will come upon us. The apostles were able to continually do what they are called to do, and they were able to record great success. You too, woman of God, can record great success. Right. You can achieve more than you have ever achieved. You too can do what God has called you to do without any limitation. It is possible. God has given us the pattern to follow. He has given us the ancient, old ancient ways to follow. If we follow it, we will achieve great results because great grace will come upon us. You don't need to pray for great grace. All you need to do is to be faithful in that which he has committed into your hand. You need to be determined in what he has committed into your hand. If you continue to pray, I want great grace come upon me. That prayer is illegitimate. You can, it will not be answered. What provoked great grace is obedience to doing what he has called you to do. And this great grace will come upon you if you do the following. You make up your mind to obey the word of God. Avail yourself to be used by God. No excuses. No excuses. I'm telling you it was not easy for the apostles. It was not easy. There were threat of death, but they continued. I'm not sure if they have all the resources they needed, but they continue. No excuses. Ah, I don't have, ah, I feel headache today. I don't feel like it. My boss was not good to me. I did no excuses. Avail yourself to do what God has called you to do. Be committed in that which he has committed into your head. And surrender yourself totally. Surrender your to yourself totally as a living sacrifice. If you do this, continue to do what he has called you to do. And if you do that, great grace will come upon you. It is my prayer that this platform Women on the threshing floor, as you continue to be faithful in what God has given to you, every Friday you are meeting, irrespective of the circumstances, in winter, in summer, great grace of the Lord is coming upon this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Before, before I go, as I round up, before I go, I, I just want you to pray, and I want to pray with you. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. 
I want you to pray. And what prayer? I said, we are not going to pray for great grace, but we're going to pray for other things. And what are the things that we'll pray? The, the Bible says sometimes the, 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 the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sometimes you feel like doing it in your spirit, but the flesh is weak. Sometimes you feel like obeying the word of God to, to, to forgive, to give for the work of God, but the flesh is fighting it. I want you to pray. Lord, I surrender myself on the altar. Let your fire purify me. Deal with my flesh so that I can avail myself fully unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I cry to the Lord, every flesh that is stopping me from doing the will of God, let it be crucified. I lay myself on the altar. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn me, burn my flesh. Crucify, crucify. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let every work of the flesh be dealt with by the power of the Holy Ghost. I call down the fire of God. Let it burn every element of flesh in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I commit your daughters and men and everyone on this platform into your hand. The word has come out. I pray that this word will achieve that which you have sent it to do in the life of each and everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus, every encumbrance, every limitation, every orchestration of darkness that is stopping your people from living the life you want them to live, from doing what you have called them to do, I pray by your right hand that those great and mighty things, let it deal with it, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare from tonight, you will begin to flourish and do what God has called you to do. That which you do shall attract great grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And they will shut up Woo! I don't know about you, but I feel refreshed. I feel empowered. I feel renewed. I, I don't know about you, but I just want you to take a minute and just write great grace. Make it in capital letters. Great grace is my portion. Great grace is my portion. Just go ahead and type it out and declare great grace is my portion. Great grace, great grace. Make it in capital letters. Yes, thank you so much. Great grace is my portion. Hallelujah. Apostle, I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> the, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know even what to say. This is so, so powerful and men of god we just want to thank god for your life thank you so much this is a solid foundation this is this is this is a solid foundation and we are ready to run on this foundation on this foundation that was laid tonight we are ready to run hallelujah and we give god all the glory men of god may you operate in great grace at all times May great grace be seen in your life. May everyone that comes alongside you, may everyone that comes in contact with you experience the great grace that is upon your life. And I'm a living testimony. I'm experiencing that. And we give God all the glory. You will never lack in your life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We give God all the glory. We have come to the end of tonight's service. And we just want to thank God for what he has done for us. We will be back next week on Friday with, should I call it step two or, or season two of great grace or sermon two of great grace. The Lord has got great things in store for us. And like Apostle said, when God says great grace, 
It means that he has already prepared everything. It means that he has already given. And he, it's almost like he's putting on the light for you and me to see that this has been given to you and me as well. So great grace is available. And throughout this month, the Lord will reveal to us where, how he has revealed that he has given that great grace to us. So don't miss out on every Friday as we are coming to be empowered to move in great grace. Remember the man of God said that great grace is activated by obedience. Don't undermine the little that is in your hands. Don't look down on the little that is in your hands. The moment you move forward, the Lord will release great grace. The moment you move forward, the Lord will release great grace. The moment you step, the, the, take the next step, the Lord will release great grace. And so we thank you all for coming online tonight. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for sharing the flyers. Thank you so much for inviting your friends and your family. And I invite you once again next week, let's come and gather again to hear what the Lord has in store for us. God bless you. And let's all share the grace together and say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, all the women of God, all the men of God. Thank you so much for coming online. God bless you, all our guests, all the women on the threshing floor. God bless you. See you again next week, Friday. Operate in great grace. God bless you. Hallelujah.